Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of Stories Written by a Current Prisoner, giving you an inside scoop, diving inside the minds of California's incarcerated big powder. Jason, brother, how are you doing, man? I'm doing um I'm doing okay, man. Just, you know, maintaining, trying to trying to uh, stay focused on the on the end means, you know what I mean? And that's that's parole, getting out and staying out. Uh thank you for asking. How how are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. Thank you for asking, Mr. Jason, sir. But you know, um, excuse me for asking, man, but man, I you know, I have this ability to be able to read people, you know, um, just from interacting with so many people along the way. I can I can read it, man, from a mile away. Jason, something that's bothering you, bro. What what's going on with you? Are you all right, my boy? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Everything no, every everything's everything is kosher, man. It's just that, you know, as you get closer, uh September September is the the date that, you know, I get my, my next shot at going back to the board and um you know, you you build up this anxiety and I'm getting a little bit nervous as I get closer, that's all. But everything is good, everything's kosher. I appreciate you asking. For sure. That's right, my boy. That's right, my boy. So, you know, me, myself, the audience, everybody, man, of course, man, we're all excited for the next segment, the next powder show, bro. So, man, we're going to go ahead and kick back, man, and the, the floor is all yours, my boy. So go ahead and do what you do best, man, and shine bright, my boy. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, you know, um, you know, so, you know, we went through a, 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 lot, of, a lot of my videos. We went through a lot of my experiences, and, um, Pretty much, you know, this world has is, is pretty much got to know who I am and who I used to be and, and who I am trying to become, and it's a process. It's a process that's, that's lengthy because when you're doing bad for so long, it might, you know, take that just amount of time to be that good, you know. And 20 years of self-destruction is, you know, going to take a lot of um, training the brain to do what's right and, and a lot of just staying focused on, on doing what's right and, and, and staying morally intact. And for me, you know, I'm going to share an experience that was probably one of my first times to where I had to experience a little bit of adversity. Well, I, I kind of made a mistake, and it's a political mistake. And, and when you're on the active mainline in the state of California, it's definitely um, sometimes you can make a mistake without even realizing that you made one. So for me, this is how it went down. Okay, so I had just arrived in high desert on Sea Yard in 2011, I believe it was. 2011, when I arrived there, it was one of the most brutal trips that I've ever taken in my life, transportation-wise. I went all the way from the bottom of the state of California, from Ironwood, California, all the way up to Susanville, which was like a three-day trip. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. And I didn't even get housed till like maybe 3 o'clock in the morning. And I remember before I even got to that prison, there was big-time rumors about the war that was going on. I've even shared my story about it. I've shared a little bit of my experience of what it was like being on that yard at that time. And, you know, it was just, it was a bad war. It was a bad setting. And a lot of people in the, you know, here in California were not trying to go to that yard. And for me, as I was transporting up there, I just knew, I knew in my heart, I just knew my intuition was telling me, like, bro, I am going to show up there. They're going to put me right there on C yard. There's no way, because there was only two active level 4, 180 yards, and that was uh, D yard and C yard. D yard was, like, considered a soft level, soft level 4, and then C yard, obviously, it was the war where nobody was trying to go. And an incident had just happened. And that incident that just happened was a brutal one. It was one where four whites came out and put all four northerners in the ICU. And during the attack, one of the white boys named Blizzard, he got shot by the Mini-14 in the process of that attack. So while they were doing it, you know, it's under gunfire. I mean, they're shooting that Mini-14. At that point, it was lethal force policy. They're not shooting to wound you. They're not shooting you to harm you. They're shooting to kill you. Understand that you're not leaving committee until you fully agree to that and fully understand that, that it's lethal force policy established, and that's what happened in Blizzard. He got shot. So I was on my way up during that time when that just happened literally days prior. So I get there, and as I'm being housed from R&R, when you get to Susanville, it's like this little little kind of hick, hick 
R and R. You know, cowboy boots are hanging up, uh, cowboy hats hanging up, and it's just this real low budget kind of place. It's it's different from every other R and R that I've been to. You're now in Susanville, which is like a little miner's town, and it's real weird and it's real awkward. So when you show up, there is nothing but like hillbillies, big old white boys that you know are rednecks, hillbillies. And I, when I was getting housed, it was winter time. It was during December, and up there it snows, and it was super, super cold. I remember that when I was being housed, it was super, super cold. And they're taking you to the yard on a golf cart during the snow, and you're just feeling that cold, crisp wind just pushing on your face, and it's just not a very good experience. So when I showed up there, I ran into one of my best friends. So he ended up being one of my best buddies, and he was from Dirty White Boys from Madera. They call it Mad Town, California. He ended up being one of my closest bros. And right there, he had just came from across the street, okay? Across the street is called the White House. They call it the White House because in Susanville, there's so many white boys on that yard. It's one of the only yards in, in, in the state of California that has that many white boys all in one spot. And he came from over there. He came from over there because he went on a mission where they beat this dude so bad and they kicked him in the face so many times that his face, you know, the skin actually detached from his skull, and it became like a skin flap. So he got charged with serious bodily injury, and it raised his points, sent him right over to Sea Yard, right there where the war is cracking. And he was inexperienced. He was a couple years younger than me, although I was still young, too. I was maybe like 24 years old, 24 and a half at that time, but I'd already been through a lot of stuff at an early age. I'd already put in my work. I'd already been in full-scale riots. I'd already been around, you know, so I knew what I was doing. Plus, I was already peni, and I was ready to rock. And at this time, on D-Yard, my homeboy, Elephant, from peni, was there, too. He was over on D-Yard, and my homeboy, Knuckles, he was right there in the ASU. He just came out for court for something that he had did, and he was, he, you know, he came from... Uh, Corcoran shoe, and they brought him back to High Desert where he caught his case so that he can go to and from court because he was being charged for attempted murder on a USAS member. That's a separate story. But as, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm, 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 I'm getting ready for war, you know, you're getting ready for another unlock. But before the unlock comes, you know that it's going to be an unlock because they'll come with these, these marriage chronos, these liability chronos that you signed before they let you go. That's when you know the stuff's about to crack, the shit's about to hit the fan because they're going to come with these papers that everybody has to sign. And basically these papers are just saying that there's no problems. If they release us, there's no problems between us and another race. That way, you know, CDCR is covered, okay? So as we're, you know, working out or training or doing what we're supposed to be doing, I'm lacing this kid up and I'm really showing him how to get prepared for war because of what the instructions were, what the orders were. They were so significant, you better be ready. So I was teaching my boy, I'm not going to mention his name, but I was teaching my boy, who was my celly, how to get fully prepared. And as we're doing this, you know, I took my my Magnavox TV and I broke it apart, the back side of it, and I melted some big, gigantic plastic knives and tied a, a piece of string to it. That way you can put it up your with a piece of string hanging out. That way when you get called out the yard, you grab that string and you can just rip it out because it's hanging out. You don't have time to sit down and squat it out, squat the knife out. You have to just pull that thing out and get to stabbing. And that's how it was. So that's what I was training him to do. And as we were practicing this one day, all of a sudden down the tier, I get a call. Excuse me, on the tier, a powder. I'm like, yes, sir. They say, hey, can you slide on through? I got a one-time for you. A one-time means a kite, okay? That's the, that's the terms of a one-time here in California. I'm not sure what they call it in other states or whatever. So I fish down there, and I pick up this one-time. I pick up this kite, and I notice that it has a Volk knot. A Volk knot is a runes. I'll have to explain what it is later on another video, but it represents the United Society of Aryan Skinhead um, that's what they, that's what they're labeled as, and that's what they represent. They have the Volk knot that, that, that signifies that that's them. And when I noticed it, at this time in 2011, they were green lighted. 
So we were ordered, we had permission to crack any kites. You had 60 seconds remaining. That had a Volk not on there because they were in trouble and we're the ones that are figuring this out due to the fact that on P9, I have all rights to read this kite. Now I crack this kite and I grab my cellie and I tell him, come here, bro, look at this. And as I open this kite, I'm calling you back. I'm calling you back, Tony. All right, Big Jason, sir. Please go ahead and proceed. So I, I tell my cellie to come here so he can read the contents of this kite with me. I want to show him exactly what to look for and what not to look for when you're dealing with these kind of politics. You know, USAS at this point, like I said, they were considered in the hat, which means they're green-lighted. And P9, being the fact that we are, you know, um, an extension of the AD, we are obligated to take care of any you know, all business regarding these type of circumstances. So I get this kite and I open it. Boom, and I'm like, look, bro, check this out. And it literally starts off, and it's, it's addressed to an individual from Coors that we have on my yard, where he was in seven block. There's eight blocks on a 180 yard, and this individual was in seven block who it was addressed to, and they happened to be at Corcoran Shoe. So this kite was at Corcoran Shoe, and it was be, being sent to seven block on my yard. And as we were reading the contents of this kite, it, it states the following, and it states that they are declaring war. The USAS is rallying troops statewide and that they have other skinhead groups that are joining allegiance and flying under the same banner as them, and they have people on every single yard, and they're declaring war on P9, Nazi lowrider, and the AB and they were calling us parasites. They were saying that we were parasites to the wood pile and that things were going to be changed and they were going to make a difference. And I couldn't even believe it. My jaw dropped. My boy's jaw dropped, and I was just like, bro, I in the, the fact that they were already in trouble, now what this guy represents is just, you know, I can't even really say it over this phone. So I take this. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. And I share it with the table. I share it with the table of the individuals that are on that yard. And what we did is I took that kite and I sent it to my contact who happened to be in Corcoran right there with the fellas. And when I sent this kite, it was coded up and there was another code that was attached to it. That way we can get some sort of instructions once this kite reaches the AD's hands and they can let us know what to do with these guys and what to do with these other guys. They, they're talking about, and I'm, what I'm referring to is Coors, Wolf Pack, Sacto Skins, Golden State Skins, and all these other ones that they're saying are flying under the same banner as them or getting ready to fly under the same banner as them. So I get it there, and next thing you know, I get a letter in the mail, postal mail, that it touched down, which means that my kite made it. My kite made it, and it came from an individual that I've known for so long, but he wasn't Peni. He was just validated, but he was validated right there where the fellas were. So I knew that the information coming from this individual is, is perfect. It's, this will work. This is legit information. And when I get it, he's telling me that there's a green light, that we need to get rid of any and all people who are involved in this kite. Now, just for me to be on the safe side, just for me to be on the safe side, I write a second postal letter to the same individual, and I tell him, I said, okay, I understand what you're saying. Now, I'm writing this again just to make sure. I want to be reassured that everything is good and that, you know, that I'm not making any type of blunder, you know, referring to this kite. So he tells me, he, I write it, I send it, he gets it, and he gets back at me, and he tells me, he says that there's only so much that he can say in these postal letters, but it is 100% a go. In the midst of this, I get validated. I get swooped up, and I find myself in the back in Z unit with some individuals that are being validated as well. And one of them, his name was John Murphy, and he was a, a sacramaniac. And this dude was saying that he had full blessings to that prison, which I knew not to be true because my homeboy Knuckles had just came back to court from Corcoran Shoe, already validated, already established, but Knuckles was going ahead, he just let this dude go ahead and have and, and claim false blessings and he'll take care of it in Corcoran, so everything falls on his neck. 
so what happens is is we let him think who he is. We let him think who he wants to be. Go ahead and think who you, whoever you want to think you are. Go ahead. So I tell him, I bring up this situation about this kite. I bring it up to him. I, I mention it in another kite, and I say, Mr. JP. That's what they called him. They called him JP from Sacramento. I said, JP, I'm not sure if you're aware or not, but I received some information from Cork and Shoe about Coors and the, the most recent status and I said, look, bro, I just received a green light. I just received a green light. Here is the postal letter. Here is everything that you need to see regarding this. I was just wondering if you were aware of it. And he says that he was. He writes me back and he says, you know what? I was aware of this too. I heard the same thing. Without even checking on anything, this individual, he writes a kite. This dude, JP, writes a kite out to D-Yard, that's the yard that he got validated off of. He writes a kite to D-Yard, and I guess there was an individual named Shotgun from Coors, who was my homeboy from my area. He's all tatted back like me. He was kind of a youngster like me, and he definitely didn't have this coming. He didn't have, he didn't really know what was going on, but one day when he's at Yard, all of a sudden he gets stabbed by his workout partner his best friend on the yard. His best friend on the yard starts stabbing him and he doesn't know what to do, but he gets plugged so many times. I mean, it's super bad, and they get caught for an attempted murder. And it was two individuals that got caught for doing the attack and then Shotgun, who was the victim. Shotgun, who was the victim, happened to land about two to three cells down from my homeboy Knuckles. And when he lands two to three cells down from a homeboy Knuckles, he wants some answers. He wants to know what is going on. What is going on? Why did he just get stabbed that many times? And Knuckles doesn't even have any answers. So he writes over to us on the other side of the Z unit. He writes over to us, and he tells us, he says, what's going on with this dude's shotgun? And I tell him exactly what happened. I tell him the secrets of events that happened step-by-step step, exactly how I went down. I told him about how I received the kite on CR. I told him about how I sent the kite and how I got a postal letter, and then I even wrote for reassurance. I told him everything. I ran the whole scoop down to him, and he writes his people. He writes his people that he's working for in Corcoran Shoe, which are the big dogs. I'm not even going to say their names, but it was the big dogs, the main guys he reaches out to to see what's going on with this call since it all reflects on him anyway since he's running this this whole prison. The word comes back, and the word's not good. The word's not good. It's not good for me because my name is associated with this call. Now, this is a learning lesson. This is the learning lesson, and this is, you know, what, what the message that I'm trying to spread on this, on this video because everything that I talk about, everything that I share is, is just letting you know how barbaric and, and the aggressive and the nature behind this prison life, the nature behind this gang life, and how tricky and complex it is and how you want to just stay away from it and think twice about actually, you know, doing these kind of things and becoming these kind of people like I was. And what happens is, is he tells me, he says, look, bro, I got some bad news for you, but you're on your way to Corcoran Shoe where they don't play. And I don't want to see anything happen to you when you get to Corcoran Shoe, bro, but you're going to need to get checked since your name it's associated to this call, and it reflects on you, it reflects on me, and it reflects on Peni as a whole. And I'm like, dang, bro. And he says, you're going to have to take a soft candy move. A soft candy move is with a razor. So he's saying I need to take a soft candy This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. A soft candy move, which is with a razor, and go a couple rounds with my celly until it's done. And that's my checking. And I couldn't believe how everything and all the precautions and everything that I, I, I did to, to assess this situation properly to try to make the best move possible, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. And this one little move, and so, so we do it. We do it. And I, we didn't have any razors on us, so I got a razor a couple cells down from a northerner that I knew always had weapons, and he gave us a razor. Yeah, I know. And I gave us, and I, gave, and I got the razor, and we used it. 
and we start going at it, and he hits, but he hits me on my back. See, you don't want to, you don't want to cut anybody on the face, and you're not trying to get out of control or irrational with these type of situations. You're trying to just get it done. So what he did was, is he cut me on the back twice. He cuts me on the back twice, and I just start gushing. I have the scars to this day on my back to prove it. I had no way to heal it. I had to let it heal on its own, and we just start going at it, heads up, boom, 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 boom. You can just hear the thumping all the way, all the way across the. The, 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 the Z unit, all the way down the tier, just thump it, and I drop him, boom, drop him, and I let him get back up, and I drop him again, boom, and I'm bleeding, and we're going everywhere. He can't beat me up. He can't beat me up, but he got the move done, and we got the job done, and we went heads up. We went a few rounds, but that that right there was to clean our backyard. That right there was to teach me never to associate myself with a call, never associate myself with, with something that, you know, I have nothing to do with. And, you know, for, to this day, I try to figure out where my mistake was, and I didn't know, but I'll tell you where my mistake was. It was coming to prison. It was coming to prison. It was joining a gang. It was living that criminal lifestyle. It was, it was living that, that gang lifestyle. And, you know, I deserved every bit of it. So I took my lickings, and I, and I cleaned myself up, and I wore that stain permanently for the rest of my active career. Everywhere I went after that, I had to look out for cooler skinheads that wanted to retaliate. I had to look out for all kinds of stuff. I had to look out for people who thought I'd put a green light out on them. Because the actual call, this was the actual call, this was the actual status of them that got misconstrued. Okay? And just to put it out there, the individual that sent me that word and the individual, JP, that sent out the word from Z unit, they both were in trouble and they both locked it up way before me. They both checked in way before me. But the actual call was that it was a premature call and that those that Coors was about to be put in the hat, was about to be issued and initiated a green light. However, their entire high council checked in, which means that they never actually becoming a part of them, which they got the opportunity to clean it up before they were green-lighted. And that's what happened. But that is, you know, some real political stuff for you, and that's just some gang politics and something that I experienced at a young age that I wanted to share with everybody and just to see and just to show you how quickly things can just go south and just turn negative in this barbaric nature. I hope you guys enjoyed the story, and thank you. Hey, Tony.